given f of x equals 3x squared and g of x equals rad x minus 5, find f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f divided by g. And then for each, we're going to find the domain uh, for each function in interval notation. Okay. So performing operations for functions. We're going to be adding functions together. We're going to be subtracting, multiplying, and dividing the two functions. And the two functions being the ones up top. f of x is function number one, and the g of x is the other function. So let's get right to it. There's two types of notation for which you can perform your operations on functions. Um, I have the two of them down here in the memorize this column. Um, they're putting the ones out on the left-hand side. Me personally, I like the ones on the right-hand side. So I will be substituting for you. They are equivalent to each other, but I think that the other ones are easier to understand. So let's go. This notation, f plus g of x, is the same thing as saying f of x plus, oh, let me put the plus down here, g of x. So those are equivalent to each other. Now I know what f of x is clearly, and I know what g of x is, so I can just plug them in. f of x was this one, right? f of x equals 3x squared. So 3x squared plus, and now what was g of x? Oh, it's rad x minus 5. Now, for the domain part, you're always going to... Uh, do your domain and interval notation for the one that is not simplified. So once I write my new function, I will put a star there because never take a domain off of your simplified version. Always take a domain from unsimplified terms. So that's why I like to put a star just so that I know later to look back at this one. Now I will try to simplify it. So I'll say f of x plus g of x equals, eh, I can't really simplify this. There's no like terms. So in this case, it would just be the same thing. This is your new function when you added the two functions together. Now let's do domain. If you're having a lot of trouble with domain, have no fear. We have a playlist just for you. Uh, it's called Domain and Range. It's on our homepage. In the math section, we have tons of questions for you just figuring out domain. Uh, since we have that playlist, I'm going to kind of go in a faster pace here for a domain. So you could always check those out if you need to. The only thing that I'm going to say here is just your interval notation. If you're using parentheses, these are exclusive values, means that whatever is in the parentheses is not included in your domain. And brackets are inclusive which means that if I have a number in brackets, it means that I can include that number. The two things that you have to really worry about for domain are fractions and square roots. Ah, we have a square root here. What's the meaning behind square roots? Remember, square roots can be zero. So it can be a zero, but no negative values. That's the rule here but no negative, that's your exclusive values. So what will make this equal zero, right? Because anything to the left of zero is negative. So I can always find the cutoff by equaling to zero. So I can say what is in the rad can equal zero, but it just can't be less than uh, zero, right? So if I just put it up here, x minus five equals zero, that means that x equals five. So that means that x can be five, but it cannot be less than five. So x can be, can, uh, has to be greater than or equal to five. That's the only exception that I see here. So I could plug in any other x value for this part that would make the function true, but it just has to be greater than or equal to five. So in this case, I will, let's see. <laughs> I will include five here, comma, all the other numbers are possible. So I'm going to put an infinity number here. Now infinity is theory, it's not an actual number. So I will put 
comma here, or not a comma, a parenthesis, because it's an exclusive value. However, I'm using a bracket here for the five because I can include five. I just can't include anything less than five. So this would be the domain. So you're starting at five and you can only go upwards. Next one, this is subtraction. F minus G of X. Well, this is the same thing as saying F of X minus G of X. Now we clearly know what F of X is and what G of X is, so I'm just gonna be subtracting them. Let's see, f of x was 3x squared minus, now, a rad x minus 5. I'm going to put a star here because this is where I'm going to do my domain off of. Um, and now I'm just going to try to simplify. So f of x minus g of x equals, eh, I can't really simplify this. So I'm just going to leave it as 3x squared minus rad x minus 5. And that is the new function. Now let's do the domain. I got another square root again. Remember, square roots can only be zero and above. So it looks like for this, my x value can only be greater than or equal to five. That means anything less than five is not included. So the cutoff is five. This domain is the same as before. I have to start at five. I can include it, it's a bracket, and I can go all the way up until infinity, but infinity is just a theoretical concept, so parentheses. And that is your domain for the second one. Pretty simple. You just gotta know your rules for exclusions of uh, the domains. The third one, multiplication, f times g of x. This, what I like to, to put is this is the same as f of x times g of x. So we clearly know what f of x is and we clearly know what g of x is, so I'm just going to plug it in. f of x is 3x squared times g of x, which was rad x minus 5. I'm going to put a star here because this is where I'm going to do my domain just in case I can simplify but eh, I'm looking at this and I can't really simplify this. So f of x times g of x equals 3x squared rad x minus 5. Okay. That is the answer for the function. This is the new function in which you multiplied those two functions together. Now let's do the domain. I go up to the one that I wrote down first and same exact things going on here. I got a rad. Rads can be zero, but they cannot be greater, uh, they can't be less than zero. So the same type of thing applies. F has to be greater than or equal to five. So I have to start at five, that's inclusive, and I go all the way to infinity. Parenthesis because infinity is not a actual numerical value, just a concept. So that's that, that was easy. And then last but not least, division. Let's see. F divided by G of X, which is the same thing as saying F of X divided by G of X. Clearly know what F of X is, clearly know what G of X is, so let's just plug it in. F of X on top is the 3X squared all over the G of X, which is rad X minus 5. Okay, now we have two concepts here, right? I have a rad and I have a denominator. The rad, the radical, is telling me that x can be greater than or equal to 5. That's what the radical is telling me, just like it was before. But remember, what was the, um, what's the denominator telling me? Remember, and I'm going to put it up here, the denominator can never equal zero. So if I plug in for five, that will be okay for the radical because I can do the square root of zero, but that will get me a zero value. And that's not good for the denominator. Oh boy. So we're just gonna have to tweak it a little bit. Um, but I'm going to star this 
just in case, because I'm going to go back to it. I just want to simplify if I can, but it looks here that I can't really do much. So I'm just going to rewrite this all nice and pretty. So this is your new function when you divided the two functions. And now let's just do the radical. We kind of have an idea what's going to happen, but let's just write it down. Domain. Oh, sorry. Did I say radical? Ah, let's do the domain. So domain. For the radical, you can include the 5, but for the denominator, x cannot equal 5. So I'm going to start at 5 still, but I'm going to exclude it now because the denominator is telling me it cannot be 5. That denominator is going to be equal to 0. That's not good. But then I can go all the way up. So I'm just going to exclude the 5 now and go to infinity and now that's it. So a little tweak changes the whole thing. So there you go. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's it. We did it, guys. Ugh, I love it when all the colors are on here. It makes me so happy. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully this lesson helped. Let me know in the comments what you thought. I love answering your questions and saying hi. Um, Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you want, click the subscribe button. It will truly help us out. And we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Um, yeah, but let's keep moving on. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.